Hello everybody, oh, running early today. I picked up yesterday um, some glass from Dunstable that had to be delivered into Onslow Square, which is central London. So I'd got that off at eight o'clock to a church. And then we was uh, picked one up from, what did they go after that? Gym equipment, Park Royal. Jim and Park, Park Royal, and that was going down to Worthing Way. And then on the way back, I've got one which I'm waiting for right now, which is not really gym equipment again, this time outdoor, that sort of open air gym equipment. You know, we see it in the park and you have to use resistance and all that kind of stuff. So I'm waiting for that, and they, they put me between two and three, and it's now half one. So I've got time to kill. So I'm talking to you guys. Oh, uh, yeah, today's one um, is what I call the Cousin Daniel Principle. Now, my cousin Daniel's out there. Now, we'll get to the principle in a minute. The thing is, a lot of the times, and this, you know, certain things repeat week after week and week on the QA. How much should you charge for a small van? How much should you charge for um, a minimum job? How much should you charge for a London job? And I do my best to give you an idea. I mean, you can charge, at the end of the day, you should charge what you're most comfortable with. A general rule of thumb is the cheaper you charge, the more chance you have of winning a job. But if you charge too cheap, silly money, they're not going to take you seriously. So that could actually work against you. And this has been sold time and time and time and time and getting on the videos. Um, and it can be very daunting when you're starting up for the first time. But what I'm saying, what you're going to need to employ is what I call the Cousin Daniel Principle. Now, I've got loads of lovely cousins, um, and one of whom, my cousin Darren, I think you may have seen on the videos before, he works for me. There's Cousin Tim, he's the astrophysicist, he's a genius Tim. Cousin Sharon's the um, the accountant, and there's Fee, Cousin Fee, she lives in Clacton, I say. But there's Cousin Daniel, Cousin Daniel's the cameraman. And he, um, basically, he's a big time Charlie cameraman. He's done the pyramid stage. He's done the bomb films. He's done the royals. He does the um, fortitude. He's got his super duper thermals on and he goes off into freezing cold and films Christopher Eccleston and the mob and all that. Um, and he said, he said that there was one time when he's on set. It's of early days when he's on set and, um, this geezer comes up to him and he says, can you tell me where the blue and the yellow wild goes? And he says, he says, well, he said, the blue wire goes in there and the yellow wire goes in there. And he said, I looked at this bloke like he just dribbled on his shirt. He said, then I thought about it and he thought, six months ago, I didn't know where the blue and the yellow wire went. And that's kind of what it's like on the exchange. At first, it's super duper daunting. And you kind of go, oh, what's it like? Oh, I don't know where I'm going here. I don't know where this goes and I don't know how much to quote. But slowly but surely, it's kind of, it grows organically. It's just something you learn after a while. And it's real subtle things. I had another mate, actually. Um, a mate of mine called um, Zach. Used to work, um, used to sell perfumes on Finchley. And he actually gave up his job to become a professional gambler. Professional gambler. Anyone who says that, you can guarantee he's going to lose their house in the next three months. Um, but Zach was actually very, very good at it. And he won some um, some poker tournament over in um, Spain. He won 250k. And he said to me, he said, Pete, he said, I'm not, and he was kind of embarrassed about it. He said, the thing is, I've worked out I'm earning more money playing cards of a night time than I am standing on a market stall during the day. He said, what am I doing standing in the cold in the rain? I can just go and play cards all day. Um, and I said to him once, he's a poker player, like I say, and I said, what is it, Zach? What is the secret to winning at poker? What's the good hand? And he said, it's not one individual thing. It's like a million tiny, tiny things. But when you start to watch them all click into gear one after another and you watch them start to line up, then you know you've got it. Which makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever, because I'm rubbish at cards. But um, the, it's kind of like that on exchange. You kind of think, well, I know that job, and it's going to go. It's going from there to there. So at that kind of miles, it would charge that kind of money. There was one today. It was going from Luton to um, Seven Oaks, and then back to Luton. So it's 75 miles, Luton van. That would be 150, 150 miles return trip. But then you're going to go 110 a mile. Theoretically, you should sell for 180. You think, well, actually, that's going to be a nice job for someone. And I reckon, you know, you're better off quoting that on long wheelbase money. 150, even 120, someone's going to do that for. And you kind of think, and it's what it's worth to you. And you just kind of get a feeling for it after a while. So anyone who's out there, and it's kind of daunting, and you're getting knocked back. And I, some, you know, some jobs will sell with some firms, will pay more than others. You get to learn this after a while. You can go, oh, it's them. Oh, okay. I'm going to be quite a bit cheap there. Or, oh, it's them. Oh, they're decent players. I better get in on that one quick. It kind of comes. 
So that's it, really. I mean, it's, I'm just repeating myself, but just trying to make it clearer. Don't panic too much at first if you don't quite get it right. Maybe quote a little bit cheaper than normal, slowly put your prices up, but it's kind of that Field of Dreams film. It's that old Kevin Cosner. If you do it, it will come. And that's about it. And if you do it, I hope you take care, take money, and um, I'll speak to you soon.